Hey guys, how's everyone doing today? Welcome to another episode of my home lab series. Um, today, we are actually going to be doing a little bit more um, just like GitLab stuff actually because we just created a GitLab server last um, in our last video. So I figured we just keep on going, kind of do a little bit more GitLab stuff. And then um, after we kind of go through all the GitLab things, we all um, build another server there. So for now, we're just gonna kind of go through GitLab um, in this one. In this specific video, we're actually going to be just kind of um, creating a GitLab project uh, using just editing some uh, or creating a repo and then, you know, pushing code and stuff, pushing code, um, but like pushing files, things like that. Just just to kind of see, you know, how GitLab works. If you've never used GitLab before, um, it's a nice like code repository to actually like handle uh code or any any other you know types of things and it has you know like revisions commits and stuff like that so you can actually review hey what changed you know from this last commit to this commit and stuff like that so we're kind of going to go over all that in, in this video um and and have some fun um so this video is also sponsored by me myself and i so if you're interested in doing a sponsorship um hit me up in my email below in the description so um without further ado let's get started guys Okay, so um, if you guys remember, this is kind of where we left off after creating our GitLab server. We logged in, we have we have this login page. We did a, a few preference settings um, and made it look dark mode because that's that's the only mode that you guys should should use. <laughs> um, so what we'll do here is actually first create a, a new project. Um, and in this case, we're just gonna create you know you know my my test project. Um, so it's, it essentially is just a test project that will allow you to, I mean, it's just a repo. You can, you can do anything with it. You can create multiple repos, you can create whatever. Um, in this case, we're just going to just make, name it my test project. You can name it really whatever you want. Um, you can also create groups and whatnot, but in this case, we're just gonna put it under our root user. Um, the visibility level, um, in this case, it really doesn't matter unless you're collaborating with other users. Um, in most cases, you prob it depends. Like if, if you don't really care where your code is, um, you probably want to use internal so that other users might be able to view it. You most likely never want to use public um, because that means anyone could use it if they had the GitLab link, but because it's on, in your home lab, it's on your own network and it's not public, you really don't have to worry about that. But in in most cases, you only want to ever use internal and private. Um, in this case, I'm just gonna use private, it doesn't really make a difference. Um, then we got um, project configuration, so we can initialize a uh, repository with readme. I usually do this because then it's just kind of a little bit nice to kind of just have something already there, um, but you can also just initialize an empty repository. Um, and then you have um, static application testing. Um, I actually don't really enable this. I don't know if there's prereqs to enable this, um, but we might enable it in the future when we do a security video. <laughs> but in this case, this is all you need to create a project. So when this project creates, there are a few things as you can kind of see up here. <laughs> um, the first thing is I can't actually push or pull using SSH keys um, because I don't have SSH keys set up. So you can go here, click add SSH key, um, and it'll bring you to the page to upload your SSH key. Now, if you're wondering how, how do I get there outside of that page, you actually just go to your, your profile here, you go to edit profile, and then SSH keys. And it brings you to the exact same page. So now you're like, well, what's, what's my SSH key? So the first thing you want to do, and I'm hoping it works well on Windows like it does on a Mac, but we should be able to generate our own SSH key with SSH key gen. Um, we'll save it, that's, that's default naming. Um, so with SSH keys, you can actually set a password for the key. So like, for example, if your key ever got stolen, you could, they, they may or may not be able to use it uh, if they don't have the password. Now, in this case, I'm going to just set it with no password. So we'll just hit enter. We'll just do do no password. So I, it just authenticates without a password. Um, but if you're more security conscious, 
uh, and you use your key for like a lot of things and or like a production system, you want a password on it. So in case in case ever your key, your private key ever gets stolen, you don't have to worry about it. <clears throat> okay. So now the next thing here, and I don't actually know, I don't think, oh, okay. I might not be able to, to do it um, on here <laughs> um, because I don't actually know commands, but the next thing we'll actually need to do um, is actually grab the, the public key. So in each um, key creation, it will create a private key and a public key. The public key is denoted by the dot pub. Um, the private key is just the private key name essentially. Uh, so the private key you should never ever ever give to anyone. The public key you essentially give out to wherever you want to be able to connect to. Um, so in this case, this is the public key. So we will input the public key into GitLab, as you can see. Um, there's a title, you can name it, whatever, um, you know, we'll use it for both authentication and signing. Um, uh, and in most cases is recommended to have an expiration date so that, you know, you have to rotate the key. Um, but in this case, I don't really care in that, in, in this regards for my home lab. So we'll just put no expiration date. So the key can always be used whenever. Um, but in other cases you will want to, um, make it so that uh, the key actually does rotate, you know, when you do like production systems. <laughs> okay, so now that we have our key uploaded, um, if we go back to our project, so go back to GitLab, go back to my test project, you'll see that there is, the, the SSH key error is gone now. Um, so for the next releases, okay, so we can ignore that, that's the release thing. Um, there is also another thing that is C so GitLab also supports CICD, which is essentially kind of like streamlining pipelines to do whatever you need to do, whether it's a build for your repo, a deployment for your repo, so on and so forth. Um, but we won't get into CICD today, but we will do it in another video. So the first thing that you'll want to do is actually clone your repo. So there's two, two ways you can clone it via SSH or via HTTP. Um, in this case, we're going to do it via SSH, but we will actually download Visual Studio Code. Um, Visual Studio Code is one of, I would say, one of my more favorite editors that I like using. Um, but you can also use like IntelliJ, Eclipse, NetBeans, whatever your flavor is. It doesn't have to be Visual Studio Code, but for me, Visual Studio Code kind of hits the spot. Um, yeah, I still want to stop. So we'll, we'll go through, we'll install Visual Studio Code and, and then I'll show you how to do it. Um, the other way is essentially you just run the command essentially, um, which is just get clone and then this, 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 whatever you copy here. Um, that usually will do it if you're on like a Linux or a, a Mac. But in this case, uh, because I'm on Windows, I don't actually know how, how that works. So we're actually going to just use Visual Studio Code to import this repo. Um, okay. So what we're going to do is connect to SSH. Oh, that didn't work. Give me a second. I haven't actually done this in a while. Um, oh, I need to download Get for Windows. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So if you don't have Git installed for Windows, you also want to download Git for Windows. Next, next, next. Oh, wait, what's that? That's fine. Get the side. Okay, that's recommended. Gosh, there are so many settings. We'll pretend I knew what every single setting it said. Um, but for the most part, 
unless you're trying to do something specific, you can just leave everything as default unless it's telling you to download some some random sketchy third party app, then then you might want to uncheck that. <laughs> um, all right, so we'll finish with that. It is now installed. Okay, I might have to restart Visual Studio Code here real quick. Now that it's Clone repository. Clone from URL. Um, we will also just put it in documents. Yes. Yes. Yep, I'm going to trust all the authors in here. And now you have cloned the repository. So you can see in here that by cloning this repository, there is the readme, which you can also see in the repo in here that there's the readme. So essentially you've cloned the repository. So now say like you want to make a change, right? So you want to create like a test file. We'll create a test file.txt. This is a test file. So you'll see in here that over here, there is your source control stuff in Visual Studio Code. So you can see that this file has changed. Um, it is, uh, you can see the diff on the left side is like what's deleted, on the right side is what's created. Um, so in this case, I created the file, put some text in it. What you want to do is with how get works, you have uh, git commands that essentially commit, push, and like pull and stuff like that. So how we actually have, how we can push to the repository is we'll actually commit this change. So we'll add this to the stage changes. So we hit the plus side. We'll make a commit message saying, this is, is a test file and we'll commit that. And, and, and the thing is they, they want me to, uh, oh yeah, yeah, come on. Yeah, they want me to configure this. Copy. And we'll do like dragon at dragon not local. And So the reason that you have to set this up also is so that when you do a commit, it it, it, it tags, you know, the, the username and the email essentially. Okay, so now that we have that, we can commit that. So committing doesn't necessarily mean it will appear in the repo, right? So like you saw me commit, but nothing has changed in this repo. Um, which is expected. Committing only means like, hey, like this ready, this change is ready to be committed essentially. Um, but if you wanted to actually be pushed to the repo, you actually have to sync, sync changes, which will actually do a git push to the repo. So when I sync the changes, um, all right, in this case, now if I reload this page, it will sh Oh, I need to get to this actual page. It will show that the test file is actually there. So this works well, especially when you're like doing like, you know, multiple people development and whatnot. You know, it's, it's you essentially, once you have the things that you need to commit, you push it up and it will reflect everywhere. So the nice thing about GitLab though also is you don't actually need an editor either. You can actually edit with the web IDE, which I've done actually a lot more than I thought I would use. Um, but it's like actually pretty, pretty user friendly. So you can see in here, we have the test file. So we can edit, this is a second line test, right? And you can actually do the same thing. It's actually over here, um, you, you don't have to stage it. It just, it just picks up that it's changed. Um, this is another test, commit to me, yep. And you don't have to push because because on the server, um, the commit is more for uh, like the copy that you're using. So in this case, because it's on the server, the, the copy is just the default copy. But on here, this is a local. So like I can do changes here all the time and until I push, it won't actually go to the global. Um, but in this case, because I pushed it here already, it, it automatically goes to global when you commit. So now if I reload this, you can see 
that in here, there's a second line. But you can also see that in here, there is that the second line is not there. It, it's, it's just not there. The reason for that is because I haven't pulled from the repo. So usually whenever you have to like do anything, you always want to pull what's latest um, before you do anything. Um, so what you can actually do is go to the, the, the get icon and do a pull. And now we pulled from the latest and you can see that it added the second line. So that's that's essentially how you kind of like use GitLab to like push, pull, commit, um, and whatnot, which is which is great when you have you know you know Ansible playbooks or or any other configuration files that you're like oh well now that I've set up this configuration file you don't want to like have to go through all the work to set it up again right um, so that is essentially how you use GitLab so we created our first project we've created a local copy of the project we've committed pushed pulled and showed you how to Pu uh, push in using the web IDE. So that is essentially going to conclude how to use and create your first GitLab project. So thank you for watching, guys. Hopefully, if you like the if you like the video, please leave a like, comment, or subscribe. Um, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks, guys.